Um, yes, so the, um, the discovery of uh, induced pluripotent stem cells or iPSCs over 15 years ago, um, truly marked a revolutionary new paradigm for regenerative medicine. So by showing that it's possible to generate from somatic cells of any adult uh, organism, yourselves or me, uh, embryonic like pluripotent stem cells that uh, were called iPSCs, induced pluripotent stem cells, that can be differentiated into almost any cell type of our, in our body. Um, it was um, open, this opened the possibility that not too far in the future, you or I could go to hospital and have uh, person specific, uh, personalized tissues generated for tissue replacement therapy. Uh, however, key issues remain to be solved before uh, IPSC therapeutics becomes a reality. Uh, namely for most uh, differentiation pathways and tissue generation routes still, uh, we don't know in fact how to predictably control the efficiency and the specificity of the differentiation process and perhaps most importantly, tissues derived from iPS cells and indeed from human proprotein stem cells in general often retain tumorigenic potential for reasons that aren't really well understood. And so uh, my um, group actually aims to elucidate the quantitative and the mechanistic basis of efficiency, specificity and tumorigenic potential in human proprotein stem cell uh, differentiation. And the grand vision really for how we aim to do this is the following, if we could look at hundreds uh, thousands or even better millions of live pluripotent stem cells and simultaneously capture as much information as possible about their position in space and time, about their cell, their cell biological properties, uh, potentially their, their fate status. And if we could then follow them and their progeny after being given a differentiation trigger to see which cells become what we want and which don't, by looking back in time, we may be able to identify trajectories that always lead to the intended differentiation outcome versus those that don't, and use that information uh, both to learn uh, to predict fate and to identify ways to control it. And of course, if we could uh, do that using cells from different individuals, then we might be able to identify ways to improve safe, personalized uh, human tissue design. Uh, of course, in practice, making that vision possible has required us to establish over the uh, past four and a half years uh, lots of experimental and computational high content microscopy technologies and pipelines to allow us to follow single cell fate at scale. So for instance, this has included the generation by CRISPR Nokin of uh, many multi-reporter HPSC cell lines expressing combinations of live reporters like reporters of cell position and morphology such as uh, fluorescent histone H2B, which is very popular. Uh, cell biological reporters like the two color Fuji reporter of the cell cycle and also cell fate reporters to be able to monitor expression of key transcription factors to be able to follow live cell fate status. It has also included the establishment of uh, optimized multi-day multicolor time-lapse imaging modalities, enabling us to monitor single cell fate dynamics live. And this itself has been made possible by using differential time-lapse fluorescence imaging modalities to sample at different temporal frequency, different channels to minimize phototoxicity. And so these and other technological developments uh, have enabled us to uniquely uninterruptedly monitor a high spatial temporal resolution, uh, cell proliferation and cell fate dynamics for multiple days across uh, many fluorescence channels, only limited really by uh, cell confluence. So as an example, here you're seeing an, uh, an HPSC line co-expressing stably fluorescent uh, histone H2B shown here in gray on the left and Fuji on the right in, in uh, green and red. Um, trigger to undergo neurectodermal differentiation for five days uh, happily under the microscope. Um, now today in the time given, I'd like to briefly tell you about two key technologies that we've developed called Oracle and DeepMap. So the first is Oracle, it's a new class of nuclear rim based cell fate reporters enabling live quantitative cell fate monitoring. So unlike conventional cell fate reporters like transcription factor fusion protein reporters, which are localized within the cell nucleus, Oracle reporters instead of nuclear rim localized. And this is because they consist, as you see in the diagram on the left, of a nuclear rim protein fused to a fluorescent protein tag, whose expression is controlled by, a, by the promoter of a transcription factor of interest. And so in this way, Oracle reports on transcription factor status at the nuclear rim, making it possible to multiplex it with nuclear localized reporters. As an example, here in the middle of the screen, you're seeing an HPSC cell line expressing stably an Oracle OCT4 reporter, whose expression is controlled by the endogenous uh, promoter of OCT4. OCT4 is a pluripotency determinant. And uh, these cells have been triggered to undergo uh, neurectodermal differentiation. And as you can see, this allows us both to observe live fate dynamics 
in this case, the dynamics of pluripotency loss, uh, but importantly to do so on a cell-by-cell -cell basis, allowing us to monitor and quantitate cell-to-cell -cell heterogeneity in sulfate decisions. Uh, to illustrate how Oracle allows enhanced multiplexing of reporters on this slide, you can see a triply knocked in HPC cell line co-expressing uh, histone H2B, which is not shown in this particular slide, Oracle OCT4 from the previous slide, this is the red nuclear rim, and the two color Fuji report of the cell cycle in green and red in the nucleus. And as you can see, by exploiting a different cellular localization, Oracle enables us for the first time to simultaneously monitor sulfate status and cell cycle state live in the very same cells. And uh, this enables, of course, new biology to suddenly be accessible. For instance, we revealed with this technology that the length of the G1 phase in cell cycle and the level of OCT4 in cells is um, they're inversely correlated. This uh, suggests there's a direct interaction between the molecular machineries that control um, cell cycle progression and pluripotency in human pluripotent stem cells. And then using Oracle to elucidate the uh, nature of that interaction could be a way to uh, identify actionable mechanisms to uh, modulate more precisely early differentiation efficiency. So that's Oracle, a powerful new, new class of sulfate reporters. I wanted to show this uh, because, uh, well, A, it's, it's very cool. It allows us to see sulfate live uh, in, in uh, pluripotent stem cells um, and, and to see cell-to-cell -cell differences. Now, perhaps an actual limitation of this kind of technologies like Oracle is the fact that each different differentiation scenario requires designing ad hoc reporters to be able to monitor transcription factors relevant to that scenario. And this can be very time consuming. So we ourselves have established optimized protocols for CRISPR knock-in, but this can easily take months. And so this led us to develop the second technology I want to present today, which is I think a bit more relevant for the site of the meeting. And this uh, technology is called DeepMap. Uh, DeepMap stands for uh, Deep Learning Enhanced Morphological Profiling. Uh, so here what we've done is instead of focusing on designing specialized sulfate reporters, we've chosen to test where the universal cell proliferation reporters can be used to monitor cell fate uh, live. So specifically uh, using human pluripotent stem cell lines co-expressing the two universal proliferation reporters I told you about before, histone H2B and FUCHI, and capitalizing on our group's expertise on computational image analysis. So what we did is we developed a customized um, pipeline to carry out live morphological profiling of cells by doing large scale image processing, uh, cell colony and single cell detection and where possible single cell tracking and lineaging, nuclear morphology classification, extraction of hundreds of uh, single cell features like nuclear cell size, cell speed, probability that a cell will undergo mitosis or die, cell density, et cetera over 550 features. And this ultimately allows us to obtain on the far right of this uh, diagram to obtain high dimensional phenotypic fingerprints or phenoprints for hundreds of thousands of images and millions of cells for a given experimental condition. And this captures the morphological and spatial temporal phenotype of that condition. So what we can then do is we can use these high dimensional phenoprints to map and compare different cell states. So for example, um, pluripotent cells, which are shown here as magenta dots and in the legend written as HPSCs versus cells uh, induced to undergo, for instance, germ layer um, differentiation into ectoderm shown as EC and the derm as EN and mesoderm as ME in blue, red, and green respectively. It turns out though that these features obtained from the time-lapse sequences, probably because of how we optimize the imaging not to kill or affect the cells in any way are probably too noisy and simply don't allow us to easily segregate uh, different cell fates from one another using, uh, for example, dimensionality reduction approaches like PCA or common embeddings like TC or UMAP. And so to solve this issue, uh, we used uh, deep learning and we established a neural network strategy to learn to spatially embed or map different cell states, uh, uh, cell fates as separate as possible on a plane based on the feature phenoprints. And as you can see on the right, the, this approach actually allows us to clearly map and cluster different cell populations. And uh, very important, uh, uh, of course, is that it allows us to do so uh, reproducibly across experiments, demonstrating its robustness. And so we call the, the whole approach of combining temporal morphological profiling and deep learning, we call it deep map. So what's cool is that then we can exploit this approach uh, to, for example, identify features that are predictive of the acquisition of different cell fates using data intensive methods. So for instance, uh, we find that cell density cell speed and G1 status as uh, assessed by the redness of uh, future expressing cells. These are the three arrows uh, where they're pointing to in the diagram. Um, they're the most important features toward early germ layer fate acquisition. And this suggests that changes in the control of cell adhesion, cell migration and early cell cycle progression may be mechanistically involved 
in causing or accompanying the commitment to early germ layer fates. And in general, the idea is that by using this kind of strategy, we may be able to, again, identify actionable mechanisms to improve the efficiency and specificity of HPSC-derived tissue generation. But what's even cooler about DeepMap is that because the fate assignment is predicted from live cell data, we can then digitally augment image sequences to predict spatial temporally cell fate dynamics in real time. And this is nicely illustrated in these movies of four different pluripotent stem cell colonies, uh, where we've applied either no differentiation trigger on the top left, or an ectomeso or endo trigger in the three remaining movies, uh, colored as per the previous color code. And as you can see, the neural network is effectively predicting cell fate evolution live in real time across multiple fates within very compact colonies solely from proliferative information. And this enables, again, whole new biology to be accessible. For example, we find that DeepMap predicts the timing of cell fate transitions at timescales potentially much shorter than what's known molecularly. Uh, for example, uh, OCT4 uh, loss in HPSCs um, following an early differentiation trigger typically can be detected by immunofluorescence only two to three days after the trigger. Instead, DeepMap detects uh, onset of pluripotency loss in some colonies already as early as eight hours following the trigger. Uh, another interesting feature is that the network also suggests possible intermediate states between one cell state and another. As you can see here on this particular diagram on the, on the left, on the embedding, uh, the network predicts that cells uh, targeted to become endoderm go through a mesoderm-like state on the way. And this suggests that mesoderm may be an intermediate state to endoderm commitment, which had been suggested previously in the mouse literature, uh, but it would have been invisible without the real-time information, illustrating again the kind of predictive power, uh, new power of this technology. And so time is short. I, I hope I managed to keep more or less the time. This is all I had, uh, had time to present to you today. I've shown you that we've developed high content microscopy technologies and pipelines to quantitatively study human pluripotent stem cell uh, pluripotency and differentiation dynamics across days at single cell level. I told you about two technologies, Oracle and DeepMap. Both can be used to quality control and benchmark synthetic tissue design. And importantly, they're cell type agnostic. Uh, make, that means that they're broadly applicable to many assays across many cell types, maybe some that interest you. And um, I'd like to finish by thanking my interdisciplinary team who actually did the work, our generous collaborators and the funders. And lastly, I wanna shamelessly announce we've just uh, founded a um, company, a spin-up company that will combine human stem cells and uh, artificial intelligence to enable predictive tissue generation, building on the know-how we developed in the lab, of which I, I hope I gave you a flavor. We're just about to open shop and are eager to hire the best talent in stem cells and AI globally and partner with tissue production companies. If you fit that description, please email us. Thanks for your attention.